Welcome to Integral Talks, a podcast series brought to you by Integra Advisors, where we dive into the world of compliance, risk management, and due diligence, and provide you with expert insight and analysis to help you make more informed business decisions. Hello, and welcome to Integral Talks, a, a brand new podcast by Integra Advisors that delivers fresh, smart, and engaging conversations with leaders and stakeholders in and around what seems to be the most thankless role in the business world today, and that is risk and compliance. My name is Alberto de la Portilla, and I am the CEO and founder of Integra Advisors. And today we have invited a very special guest. Michelle Caputi serves as Strategic Alliance's manager for Banco Industrial, the top performing bank operating in Guatemala today, and one of the largest institutions in Central America. He has been in banking for more than 25 years and prides himself a promoter disrupt of disruptive thinking and financial information. And that is why we invited him today to talk about a topic that is near and dear to his heart and a topic that is shaking up the financial world, and that is fintech. Hello, Michelle. How are you today? Hello, Alberto. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. And first of all, I want to congratulate you for the initiative of Integra Talks. It's a it's an open space to talk about the new industry, the beginnings, and also to remember all the knowledge that we gather in the last years. Thank you very much for the invite. Well, thank you for thank you for participating today. So, tell me about uh, you are the Strategic Alliances Manager at Banco Industrial. So, tell me what that is, what you do today, and how you arrived here. Well, uh, Alberto, right now my position the, the name is something that it, we invented in in, in one in, in in one minute with my with my boss right now. But right now, I'm working with Banco Industrial in a in a confidential uh, project, but basically the Banco Industrial right now, it's, it's focusing in to get in, in those spaces that they are not right now. We are leaders in the, in, in consumer banking, in the affluent and emerging affluent. We are leaders in the corporate banking. We are leaders in entrepreneur banking. But right now we are focusing on the base of the pyramid. And that is a project that I'm leadership right now. They talk to me. As you know, I was former CEO of Bantrap, a one bank here in, in, in Guatemala. That is uh, the main business is in consumer banking in the work, in, in the work level in the country. And that is one of the key things that they saw me to get this position and to leader this this project right now and also the interest and the development that i get already on the last five i don't know five years in the in the fintech world and develop some project that to manage the uh, banking inclusion to get more uh i don't lean the operation to have a fresh a view of the banks to 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 get more easy to the people to get to be um, a bank client and to be bankerized here in the Central America because it, it, it's a challenge. You know, yeah. right now we are seeing numbers maybe better than before the the the, the COVID. But they are also a challenge. We have right now people, I don't know, around the 55% of of people in Guatemala are not uh, using banks to get their transactions and only 12 to 50% can access to credit products. Okay. It's it's very dramatic in, in, in that level. And we are seeing a, a very big space, not only in Guatemala, also in all the region in Central America and also in the Caribbean when you have a very good uh, opportunity to get into into that space. So, I, so when I think about fintech, I think there are two buckets. Uh, fintech is on the one hand uh, facilitating processes. You have artificial intelligence. You have machine learning. You have robotics that is about making things more efficient, data processing. But then the other side, uh, which I think you're, you're you're obviously alluding to, is the products and services side that fintech. Uh, facilitate such as digital payments, uh, lending, alternative lending. So, uh, and, and understanding that if fintech is allows for those non-banking clients traditionally uh, to to you know have access to banking products and services. So, so is that is is your bank 
um, heavily focused in that area. Obviously, you see that, that the bank sees that there's a need, particularly in Guatemala and Central America. But tell me a little bit more about what you can, because obviously some of this is confidential. But what um, you know, how do you see fintech uh, playing a big role in your role at the bank going forward? Yeah, I think you, you, you describe it very, very well. The fintech, it's focused on efficiency. We have to deliver uh, financial products to the customer with a minimum cost uh, in that to uh, get a low cost and not translate this into a high cost to the client. But right now, we are in the project, we are focusing on, on the construction and development of the order architecture that right. it's going to get alive the ecosystem. I think that it's key. And one of the keys that we are focused right now with, with a very good investment, with a very good investment in, 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 in talent, in money, in... Um, in in worship that that we have done it's in the data lake and the data mail because if you don't have data you can use the artificial intelligence you can de describe the 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 person you you cannot know the all the development of this business you can predict what are the needs of this customer and to offer some in in more in and to be more pushed and pull Right. With this, with this initiative, we we have to have an, a an, a a position that we are proactive and not reactive. But for that, if you have, if I have to tell you the core of this and the core for the fintechs right now, it's to have a good data, to have a lot of information that are coming to us, and we have to process us. We have to knowledge. We have to. To get uh, to to be uh, very 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 careful with the all the 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 refination that we have to do to this data to understand and to value that mm -hmm. and to also get a very well care and have secure because all right. the 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 dangers that we have right now with the phishing mail with the ransomware right. with the attacking. It's, but I think the main issue here with the fintechs is the data. Yeah, and I think I think you're seeing at least on the regulatory side in the United States and other other countries where the regula the regulations that are being created and uh, pushed out to the industry by government is around cybersecurity and protecting the yeah. data, protecting identity, um, to making sure that none of that is uh, is a uh, threat to the consumer particularly when the consumer is uh you know providing information that is that is private to the institutions um do you think that so so you're in guatemala uh, you've been working for a long time in central america um, yeah. what's been the reception in terms of fintech i understand guatemala has a uh, a younger demographic that is very active and entrepreneurial, um, perhaps versus other uh, countries, uh, neighboring countries. What has been the the, the response? Uh, what has been the the reaction of of the the demographics and the and the community of uh, potential consumers to? Uh, well, to the bank? just in matter of numbers, just you know, Guatemala has fifteen millions of. Of persons right now living in Guatemala. Also, we have three millions of, of persons living abroad, Guatemala. But right now in Guatemala, we have around 22 million of cellular phones, all of them intelligent phones right now. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge opportunity to be in the phones of the of this person. But it's a huge challenge to to motivate these. A potential customer to download a new application, to use a new application, and that it's a it, it's a it's a huge challenge that we have to to perform the best of the best in in UX UI to design from bottom up, listening the the customer, giving a, all, all this information and translate to a very good experience ad hoc to the to your focus of your business because it's different if you are developing i don't know a wealth management uh, industry with application like robinhood 
it's different that you are developing a wallet or you are developing, I don't know, a delivery app. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the difference that you have to know which one it's going to be your target customer. But right now in Guatemala, we have a, a very good appetite of the consumption of application. We have here Uber, it's very good adopt. You have uh, Uber Eats, right. Delivery Hero is here right now in Central America right. with four countries. We, we Airbnb, it's working very, very well. And we, we have a very good adoption. With the global um, brands, uh, the brands. brands yeah. but because not it's not, not it's because it's a global brand. It's because they have the 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 very the the very good UX that it's adapt to everybody, and mm -hmm. that is one of the challenges that we have here in Central America. That the the fintechs or the techs that it's born in Central America, we have to evolve very fast. That is one of the challenges that we have right now because I, I saw a different text in a different industry here, born in Central America, and one of the things is they, they, they can get the, the velocity of the capacity to evolve very fast that it, the clients are demanding. They mm. born and they get like a, in, in, in a perfect line, they don't evolve in a new, I don't know, Products, uh, new UX, UI changes, evolution, security, and, and the the person wants something that evolves, and that is one of the secrets of I don't know Facebook, Google, TikTok. You know, we we can name everyone that it, constantly they are evolving, they are improving, they are listening to their customer, they are getting more gadgets, they are getting more uh, information. They, that is one of the key things that we have to learn or to adopt here in, in, in Central America. And that it's also, in the other hand, uh, gather or link it to the investment. Right. The, I, the, the, the money, it's, it's available, but something that, that it's very difficult, it's everybody that wants to invest in, in Central America in a tech business, they want a, a very fast return. Right. And this business is not in a short term. It's maybe a midterm, long term. You have to to build that uh, yeah. community and right. then rent and then get the the rentabilization of this community. And that is not happening in the from the day to night. And also because we are very small countries with a very different characteristics. You know, if you if you summarize all Central America, it's around I don't know. A hundred million person. You have that in uh, I don't know. The US is four x six six x. If you have to Colo if you are in Colombia, you have maybe I don't know sixty million person. It's different scale that you have in other countries, and that is one of the the key challenges that we have to confront here with the with the tech industry and also with the fintechs. Yeah, no, it, it's interesting. I was going to ask you how how do those local fintechs in Central America or Latin America narrow that gap? Is it is it okay? On the one hand, it sounds like you're saying that um, you know they could they they need more capital. Um, they need more yeah. investment capital, but the capital has to be tied to a long game. No, it can't yeah. be a short turnaround, and that's a challenge when you're when you're trying to uh, get capital from the United States, where everybody is trying to invest in startups to make the quick buck. That's a challenge. Yeah, but when, when you see the forecast in the tech here in, in Central America, if you have a fintech that have here, I don't know, uh, three hundred thousand clients, right. it's big. <clears throat> but that in the states, it's nothing, you know, because the scales are from millions, are from hundreds of millions of, of engagement that you have to have to uh, to get profitability in your investment, you right. know, and, and that, that is one of the challenges that we have here. Also, in the other hand, we have more ecosystem because uh, you we, we all the development and the access that we have to the cloud, then, then it's get cheaper to to get access to the development with the post COVID uh, the the talent acquisition uh, that we can get it's it's maybe more global because I have people that it's working from Argentina from right. Colombia right. and and for me it, it it's that get 
better and cheaper because I don't have to spend a lot of money to find one person between, I can go to the world and ask who have these skills and I can work with them remotely, 100%. Right. And that is one of the, the advantages that we have at this point. And also it's because post-pandemic, because we learn to work on the distance. We learn right. how to secure all the information working remotely. And that is one of the key uh, things that we have right now and, and, and gave it to us the opportunity to grow a little bit faster than we are doing it before COVID. Right, right. Um, so, so some of the companies that are um, succeeding in in that you're familiar with, what what is? Can you name some of the fintechs? You know, not not your your, your traditional. I cannot. I cannot be compromised to name one of them. <laughs> okay. But, but what well, are they doing? What you, are they doing well? I can give well? you one. No, I can give right. you one name. One of them. It's. I think that the last mile. Um, fintechs are doing very well in Central America because it's a very uh, good service with a very good space, but definitely they have some gaps. And one of the gaps that they have is the population is not fully bankerized. And that is one of the gaps that you have to, to close to get this, the scalability that, that, that you want for, for that, for that business. But I think in the next few years, we will see a, a very fast growth in Central America uh, of the fintech uh, evolution. And also because we are seeing a lot of, 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 the, of the progress that we have in Colombia, in Brazil. In Brazil, with the big 10, it gets very nervous, all the banks in Central America, because that is one of the things that take out all the income that you have for payments with PICS in Brazil. And that is one of the things that we are studying right now to get a, 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 a big uh, payment ecosystem and only the rails and the customer, the, the, they gonna, they, they gonna choose their institution or the tech that they use because the UX, UI, the security and the experience that they have. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of, uh, uh, regulation uh, in, in Guatemala or in Central America, Latin America, let's say in general, what, what are you seeing governments? It, it's very different when yeah. you go to country to country because right. you have maybe El Salvador that is right now uh, adopting the Bitcoin like two right. years ago. Right. And Guatemala, I don't know, two years ago, it get up some evolve in the, I don't know, in the KYC thing, in the opening digital, fully digital accounts. And, and you you have very asymmetric region in that in that point. But but one of the things that I think we have to do all across the world, not only in, in in Central America, it's to get more involved in the evolution of the compliance office role in the bank. Right. We have to get more get involved in get better data to get better understanding of the data and to get better processing on the data. Like we talk sometimes offline, the thing right. of the scoring of the, of, the, of the client. We right now have a lot of information of some of our clients. We can predict some risk on them, not to be better for credit or bad for credit. If this person have potentially gonna breach a KYC are going to have some problems on that or on, on whatever thing that, that my policy have. I think we have to, to evolve from the, from the, I don't know, from the physical folder to get, I don't know, the, the KYC amplified to have more uh, AI. And mm -hmm. also we, we can talk for something that it's right now in the, in the mind of everybody with the chat GPT. That is the things that we have to invest in the in the artificial intelligence to predict that type of uh, behavior on our customer or potential customers. Right. Yeah, and I, th I think you're certainly seeing a, a big push. Uh, I mean, you've seen it for the last five years or so in the United States uh, with uh, artificial intelligence being adopted yeah. by by large banks and and smaller banks. That are are using it to try to um, make processes of 
uh, data reviews and analysis more more efficient and, and but uh, one of the things that, that I get not frustrated but 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 I also think about this is all the the investment that we are doing in an AI in some institution or the institution that already taken in, in the early days is for the business. How can I, I don't know, develop better processes to right. the client? How can I develop <laughs> right. But right. no one is also looking or taking around to the compliance office that it, it's very expensive, right. you know? Right. And in, in some cases, they take a lot of time to take some decision. And that is one of the biggest friction that we have with the clients and to acquire new clients and to develop growing with this client. And I think that it's a very big chapter that we have to focus on that we we as a or me as a former uh, risk manager i i think it's one of the the things that that, that i push more is to have a, a a very good data that can predict this uh, behavior customer and we can grow very fast and to get a less or zero friction with our clients because it's not something, it is, it's very difficult to get more information about the client, to take a phone call with them, to give a message or something, to give more information about, about any of their transactions, if I can predict that in a very good level, no, in a very good level of confidence. Right, right. I, I, I think AI is headed in that direction. I mean, I think AI... Um, and machine learning is uh, still in the infant stage, um, yeah. and how and the implementation of that of those technologies is still in the very early stages. Um, I do, I am excited about uh, fintech on the on the products on digital payments, and now you have uh, you know, Walmart, and you have you know getting into uh, payment uh, options where where well, Walmart is in Mexico, and I don't know how many different operations I have in Mexico, but. Um, yeah, it reaches consumers that normally would not be. Yeah, you, you have now uh, Apple with right. Goldman Sachs, right? Uh, joint venture, and they are offering a, an, an, a, an account, a, a banking account that is fully digital. Yeah, and well, in the other hand, you will have some. You, we have some issues with the data privacy with all this around of the security of my privacy around the, the data that I'm sharing right now, the mm -hmm. data is mine or if of the banks. Mm -hmm. We have in, in Europe, we have some very, very hard regulation around the data because they told the data is it's a proprietary of the person. And if the person wants to share the data in of the of the bank to other institutions, you have to do it. We don't have right now these in, in America, but I think it, it's going to be more pressure on that with all these AI machine learning, uh, more legislation around the, the data issues or the attacking of, of, of lost data and around all of that. Because yeah, like, it's, it's like, like I told, I, I don't know, many years ago, it's, it's, the, it's the new oil, it's the new gold. The, mm -hmm. the gold, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a good point. Uh, I, I I also think what's happening now with uh, w w at least in the United States, we're very reactive, and so and the government is very reactive. So now you have Silicon Valley Bank that collapsed a few yeah. weeks ago, which was heavily uh, invested in, in in fintech startups because they were they were basically the bank for the VC firms that were investing in those startups, and so now there's this big push to um, to regulate. Uh, and and improve uh, examination practices and improve but if uh, regulations you around if, that. If I can give you my opinion, yeah. uh, Alberto, Please. I think the issue with the with the Silicon Valley Bank and other things also is a very bad problem that we have with all the supervisors and regulators. Right, you cannot have that happen. In, right. in the moment that we have, we are sharing information every month, every day. Daily, as a bank regulated, you have to do that, right? And and how nobody can manage the the cash flow and all the position that this bank have are very risky. And get the hand up and say, hey guys, we have to manage this. You cannot go to the market. We we have to rebalance your balance sheet. 
O sea, right now, we, we can't, we don't have right. to talk about this. I think it is something that it's, it's not pro, it's not, the, the thing is not the, sure. uh, to say, the problem is the fintech. The problem is that you are investing in, 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 in a some volatile ecosystem. No, the problem is the regulator doesn't make the work right because they are there for that, you know? I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think, uh, um, I don't think necessarily fintechs are being blamed, at least no. from the industry perspective, but I think government will overreact. And I think there's a lot of finger pointing of who did, you know, who did what wrong. Um, there will be hiccups along the way. This is a journey that fintechs are, are engaging in and there's going to, this is going to happen. There will be other hiccups that will, Uh, challenge the industry and challenge the perspective of financial technologies. You have a lot of issues related to cryptocurrencies with yeah. issue with FTX and, 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 and other, um, you know, exchanges and other companies that have received some bad press. And maybe you can understand press. that because they are an a, a industry that is not regulated. Correct. And that is a, that is a high risk. If right. you're going to, if you want to go to the crypto, you're going to be not regulated. Right. And, and, and it's other for, for now, the for other now, point of view for now because it's changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for now, and it's yeah. going to change, and it's going to change very fast in the next right. few years. Right. But also, as a human, we we have we have to have the liberty to invest whatever I want. You know, it, it's and you have to have all the facts to to develop your your own criteria to do that. But it, it, IFX, it's not regulated, but Silicon Valley Bank is regulated and it happened all the same. Right. And how we can guarantee to the customer that the banks are the more secure institution to have your money and to administrate your, your money. Right. That is one of the things that it put in pressure to us to tell our customers, hey, we are administrating our bank very well. We are a very solid institution with a very good financials. You can, you can be... You can dream with your ship every night because we don't we're gonna uh, have the, this type of, of issues. So it sounds like there was an effect in, in even in your in your country where yeah. you sit on the Silicon Valley Bank of a financial institution that Definitely. really it seems like it was an isolated incident. You know, there wasn't a a uh, an entire you know th there was no collapse of the financial. Although there were people, no, but, people we, we, but you we felt get, the effect in, in Guatemala. Yeah. Yeah. We we get some we we get some heat there yeah. Yeah. because the big customers or the 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 of public opinions right. begin to say, well, if in the U.S. the banking Correct. are collapsing, what do you can expect from Guatemala and other countries in Central America that the regulators and the politicians well better don't talk about that. And what do you tell and, the customer? And, what do you tell the customer in that? No, you you have to. We tell the customer we are a very solid uh, institution. You can you can see our financial because we, we are public and we do it all the time. You can see all the investment that we have. We have all the regulators. We we work very close with the regulator to 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 get through a very solid institutional uh, message to the to the persons and to the population. To be uh, in a in a very safe place with their money in our banks because we have a very healthy um, financial systems. Right, right. But but we get some hit. Yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I think uh, um, I mean we could go on and on and on and talk about yeah. uh, financial technologies and all and all. But uh, I I, I want to ask you just to kind of. Uh, Uh, off, off the, the the beaten path question. Just uh, change the the topic. Is okay. uh, I, I I like to. I, I'm a big fan of uh, of music. I'm a, I'm a fan okay. of music. I I I I I write about music. I listen to a lot of music. I teach my kids about music. Um, what what can you tell me? Do you have a favorite band? Uh, what's your favorite band? Do you have a favorite band? Do you like if rock I music? can't tell. Yeah. The, the band that, that I get right mm -hmm. now in mm -hmm. my mind is Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses. One of them, my, 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 one of my, my favorite. And also Michael Jackson. I like a lot the music. And right now, I, I, Bruno Mars is also one of the one I like. Like yeah. Lady Gaga. 
Sure. But I listen music a lot. But when I go to the gym or, not, or I'm doing some workout, it's the moment that I that I consume a lot of music. But yeah. I change from electronic music to reggaeton, Bad Bunny, and yeah. to, I don't know, salsa with Willie Colon. And yeah. I can listen whatever and ever. Yeah, well, well I, I will say that, that just given the fact that we've, talked about something as disruptive as financial technologies. Uh, you mentioned Guns N' Roses, which was a very disruptive force in the, was it 1980s yeah. when they came out? Uh, Michael Jackson also changed the, the, the music. So the king the, of pop, the king of pop. Uh, so those were two very, uh, good examples of disruptive musicians and which I think ties perfectly into your background and, and, and what you, <laughs> what you care about yeah. in terms of financial technology. Well, so Michelle, Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate uh, you sharing your, your opinions and your thoughts. Um, and uh, everyone, please stay tuned for the next uh, podcast uh, of Integral Talks. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, Alberto, for the invitation. My pleasure. Thank you.